we have already discussed five key points immediate causes of confined space incident in this part we will discuss the remaining five points how the worker was unconscious in a confined space what are the reasons behind until then we will not disclose the secrets we cannot implement safety we cannot prevent similar incidents in the future so stick around before going in depth i would like to memorize you that you are on the platform of safety first life if you are visiting for the first time kindly subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for all future notifications and if you find the video informative then like comment and share it with your friends and colleagues dear friends and fellows personal protective equipment can have significant consequences for wearers for users as it compromises their safety and leaves them vulnerable to the hazards they are meant to protect against when ppe is not used correctly it diminishes its effectiveness and exposes workers to unnecessary risks one common issue is the improper fitting of masks or respirators if a mask does not create a proper seal around the wearer face maybe the entrant is a beard man contaminants can easily enter negating the protective barrier it is supposed to provide this can result in inhalation of harmful substances leading to respiratory issues chemical exposure or even long term health complications secondly in adequate respiratory protection is another concern if workers are provided with ppe that doesn't offer sufficient filtration or protection against the specific hazards present in their environment they remain at risk of inhaling toxic fumes airborne particles or other dangerous substances this can lead to acute respiratory distress lungs damage or even life threatening situations or conditions furthermore improper use of other types of personal protective equipment such as gloves or goggles can also pose risks for example wearing gloves that are too loose or using goggles that don't fully cover the eyes can result in exposure to chemicals or physical hazards leading to skin irritation eye injuries or other occupational health issues the effects of improper personal protective equipment ppe use extend beyond immediate physical harm workers may develop a false sense of security if they believe they are adequately protected leading to complacency and a lack of vigilance this can increase the likelihood of accidents injuries or exposure incidents in the workplace you are on the platform of safety first life today we are discussing about the accident investigation process how to get at the root causes as a health and safety practitioner you need to know the immediate and the underlying causes prior to access the root causes the seventh possible immediate cause of confined space incident might be the absence of continuous monitoring the absence of continuous monitoring of atmospheric conditions and industrial settings can expose workers to grave risks as it leaves them unaware of potentially hazardous changes in their environment without real time monitoring systems in place slight or immediate shifts in atmospheric conditions such as 
the sudden escalation of toxic gas levels can go unnoticed until it's too late this lack of awareness can lead to dire consequences as workers may unwittingly remain in an environment that has become unsafe increasing their vulnerability to serious health hazards or even fatal outcomes every point is important and you know the value of life as a health and safety practitioner and you must know what are your roles and responsibilities to protect people from harm injuries incidents or accidents for that you need to know the immediate the underlying and the root causes if unfortunately there is an incident in your workplace how you can prevent similar incidents in future only once you will investigate in depth and you will figure out the root causes and you will remove the causes and then there is no chance of fatal incident in your workplace you need to remember the effects of this lapse in monitoring you need to understand so provision and monitoring is the key point to prevent workplace incidents or accidents the effects of lapse in monitoring side supervision can be devastating in situations where toxic gases are present such as in chemical processing plants or confined spaces the sudden increase in levels due to a leak or malfunction can pose immediate dangers to anyone in the vicinity without continuous monitoring and alarms to provide early warnings workers may not realize the escalating threat until symptoms of exposure become evident by then precious time for evacuation or intervention may have been lost increasing the likelihood of injuries illnesses or fatalities among workers who were caught unaware by the changing atmospheric conditions who is responsible here the confined space entry supervisor the attendant the gas tester and overall the health and safety practitioner because they should recognize they should understand the dangers those are related to confined space entries point number 8 in adequate communication this might be another cause of this confined space incident remember in adequate communication between workers inside confined spaces and the safety team outside can significantly impede response efforts and exacerbate risks increasing the chance of a potential incident when communication channels are lacking or unreliable crucial information may not be relayed in a timely manner leading to delays in identifying and addressing potential hazards or emergency situations this lack of communication can leave workers isolated and vulnerable unable to alert others to signs of trouble or request assistance when needed most very important point communication channels should be reliable and maintained throughout the activity throughout the confined space operation do you know the effects of inadequate communication can be far reaching and severe without clear lines of communication workers may find themselves unable to convey critical information about changing conditions equipment malfunctions or medical emergencies occurring within the confined space this can result in a lack of coordinated response efforts as safety teams may be unaware 
of the severity of the situation or the urgency of the assistance required as a consequence valuable time may be lost in initiating rescue operations or providing necessary aid increasing the risk of injuries fatalities or long term health consequences for those trapped or endangered within the confined space dear friends and fellows as you have noticed in the scenario the emergency team from the site they were unable to rescue the entrant the confined space worker here you need to notice one key point you need to notice on delayed emergency response delayed emergency response can arise from various factors each with its own potential consequences that worsens the severity of an incident one possible cause is insufficient training or awareness among personnel regarding emergency procedures and the importance of swift response if workers are not adequately trained to recognize signs of trouble or are unsure about the steps to take in case of an emergency they may hesitate or fail to initiate the appropriate response in a timely manner this hesitation can prolong the time it takes to mobilize rescue efforts increasing the duration that a worker is exposed to hazards and intensifying the risk of injury or harm another factor contributing to delayed emergency response is a lack of preparedness or the availability of necessary rescue equipment if essential tools such as personal protective equipment ppe communication devices or specialized rescue gear are not readily accessible or properly maintained it can impede the efficiency of response efforts in adequate preparation may also extend to the absence of designated rescue teams or trained personnel on site further delaying the deployment of assistance to workers in distress in dire need the effects of delayed emergency response can be severe and wide ranging for example prolonged exposure to hazardous conditions increases the likelihood of injury illnesses incapacitation among affected workers or even death additionally delay in initiating rescue operations may limit the effectiveness of subsequent intervention efforts diminishing the chances of successful extrication or medical treatment moreover extended response times can heighten psychological distress and anxiety for both the affected worker and their colleagues exacerbating the overall impact of the incident on workplace morale and mental well-being overall the combination of delayed response and prolonged exposure to hazards heightens the risk of adverse outcomes and underscores the critical importance of implementing efficient emergency response protocols and maintaining a high level of readiness at all times dear health and safety practitioners when there is an emergency there is a fire incident there is an unconsciousness incident in a confined space like we are discussing in the scenario time matters how swift quick and immediate over professional efforts maybe we will be able to rescue maybe we will able to help the victim to stay further if we are late it means he or she who is already trapped in dangers is no more the last point point number 10 that might be the immediate cause of 
the unconsciousness of a worker in a confined space insufficient rescue equipment insufficient rescue equipment presents a critical barrier to effective emergency response particularly in confined space scenarios where every second counts without the necessary harnesses lifelines and retrieval systems readily available the task of extracting an unconscious or injured worker becomes not only challenging but potentially hazardous rescue teams may find themselves grappling with improvised solutions or facing significant delays in accessing the appropriate equipment further complicating an already precautious situation inadequate tools can hamper rescue efforts prolonging the time it takes to reach and extract the trapped individual and increasing the risks to both the victim and the rescuers you can understand how important is this point if there are no resources you cannot fight a battle you cannot handle emergency situations you cannot rescue a trapped person from the confined space a sewage manhole the consequences of lacking proper rescue equipment can be dire beyond impeding extraction efforts insufficient tools heighten the potential for injuries and fatalities during rescue operations without the means to safely secure and lift the affected person rescue attempts may be fail or with difficulties leading to increased risks of further harm or accidents moreover prolonged extraction times due to equipment limitations expose the trapped individual to prolonged hazards exacerbating the severity of their condition and increasing the likelihood of adverse health effects addressing this issue requires a comprehensive approach ensuring that all necessary rescue equipment is not only available but also in good working condition operational state thus enabling swift and effective emergency response in confined space environments unfortunately in my career i have noticed the health and safety practitioners they are not going to physically inspect scba pressure is there or no once they saw the scba is on site okay okay that's enough that is not enough maybe they just going to cheat or deceive you there is no guarantee that scba is fully charged and it's working maybe scb is there it's fine but not a single person from the emergency team is there who know how to use it effectively efficiently during emergency situations who will ensure all these these are the responsibilities of the project team the construction team the supervisory staff and above all the health and safety department safety officers they need to ensure because they are going to approve confined space entry permit it means the site is safe resources available workers trained and once there is an incident who will be blamed at the end of course who approved the operation to continue and that is the health and safety practitioner dear friends and fellows i have mentioned here 10 important key points as immediate causes five immediate causes in part 1 and five in part 2 so you need to be aware of this complete accident investigation process a procedure video series this is very important this is a practical approach and you need to know how you can investigate 
how you can initiate an investigation so immediate causes are in two parts after that we'll discuss again the underlying causes in two parts in the third stage i'll discuss the root causes for the same scenario i hope and believe that you will learn a lot from this training program training series for now that's all if you have any question please ask in the comment section thanks for watching and don't forget to like comment and share the video hope to see you soon with a new hsc tutorial until then take care good luck and goodbye